Hello, hello, hello. I am the Linux Mensch. A week ago, I did a video on free BSD. And today, I'm going to do a video on ghost BSD. So, let's get to it. So, I'm at the uh, ghost BSD website. And we're just going to go down to download. And we're going to go down to this page. And they just came out with a brand new ISO about three weeks ago. I'm just going to click on uh, this icon here, direct download. And I'm going to go to Canadian Mirror. And it's downloading an ISO. Now, I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I'm going to stop that because I already downloaded the ISO. So now I'm going to close my web browser. And I'm going to open up a virtual machine and go through an install. So when you boot up onto the ISO, you're going to get this screen. And you can use your, your arrows to go up and down, but we're just going to go into the first one, Intel. Start desktop with legacy Intel. I'm going to hit enter. And it's just going to take a minute, and it's going to boot up into a live environment like most other Linux distributions do. I know this is not really Linux. It's Unix-like. I don't know the difference. Anyways, when you do free BSD, it takes you into a TTY, and you go through an install that's kind of similar to Arch Linux. But with GhostBSD, it brings you into a live environment. So you can play with it. And the live environment is the Mate desktop environment. So you can play with it. And if you're doing this on bare metal and you decide you don't like it, you don't want to install it, you can just reboot your computer and pull out the thumb drive and no harm, no foul. So I'm not going to play with it right now. I'm just going to go through and install. So I'm just going to click on this icon, install Ghost BSD, And it lands on English, so I'm going to hit Next. And it looks like the Calamari's installer, but I'm not sure if it is. Uh, English US, that's good enough. I guess I could do English Canada. Let's do English Canada. Let's go Next. And here is where you pick your... Uh, locale so i'm just going to go down to toronto here it is here i'm going to click it on and now i'm going to go next little disk configuration yes single disk type yes i'm going to click on i made a 50 gig hard drive uh, of course this is a virtual machine and it's going to give me a swap of 248 Let's see if we can change that to 148. Can we do that? Let me try that again. There we go. Let's see if we can change that to 148 and see if it's going to work. And let's go next. And I'm just going to leave it clicked on the default for the bootloader. I'm going to click on next. And my real name, I'm not going to put my real name in, of course. I'm going to just type in Mitch. And my password. I'm going to do this. It's telling me it's weak password, but this is just for the virtual machine. And I'm going to put my password in again. And I'm going to install it. So I went through this install the other day. It took a minute and a half. Yes, that's right, folks. It took a minute and a half to do a full, complete installation of GhostBSD. And now I'm just going to pause it for a minute or so and come back when the installation's done. And then I'm going to reboot into the system. So don't go away. Okay, it finished. Honest. It took a minute and a half. This is the fastest installation out of everything I've ever done. Anyways, let's restart it. And we're going to boot into the system. Okay, so we're at the login screen of our new installation, and I'm going to put my password in. And there we are. We are in our brand new installation of GhostBSD with the Mate desktop environment. So first thing we're going to do is see if there's any updates to do. So in the Mate, it's not a very popular uh, desktop environment. It's older, but it still gets updates. And uh, this is the mod tank. In case you're not familiar with it, you have three uh, menus up here. So we're going to go to system. We're going to go to administration. We're going to go to update station. Let's click it on. And it's looking for updates. 
And I don't think there's going to be any to do. Because when I was practicing this the other day, there was no updates. Like I said, the ISO is only about uh, three weeks old. No update available. The system is up to date. Okay, so let's close it. Now, this has a software center. Oh, first of all, before I go there, let's just take a look and see what's in here. For Office, they just have a PDF viewer. They don't have a LibreOffice suite or another suite, but you can get it. Uh, for sound and video, they have Rhythmbox and VLC Media Player. For Internet, they have Firefox. And there's really not a lot in here. It's kind of light. That's okay, because, like I said, you can uh, go into the software center and install things, or you can install things in the terminal, just like you would do in FreeBSD. So let's go to the software center, and I don't think HTOP is installed. System tools? No, it would be right here. What I'm going to do is go into the software center just to show you how to use it. And here, so we got to go to system. I'm not that familiar with the Mate desktop environment. I played with it a little bit here and there, but I never really lived in it long term. So we're going to go here to system. We're going to go to administration and we're going to go to software station. Now the software state. Oh, so then we have to. So first we have to put a password in. Let's do that. And the software station has to load up and you can see. See this blue line? It's loading up. It's syncing. And the software center takes like a minute to sync. It takes a little bit longer than other software centers and other uh, distributions. But it's not really long. <laughs> okay, so it takes about 30 seconds. And I'm just going to make this full screen. So let's do a search. Here's all our things that we can download. Let's do a search for each top. Oh, and it has a bash top. Or HTOP. Well, I'm going to just install HTOP. Let's click it on. Let's apply it. And let's confirm it. There you go. And is it done? Can't be that fast, could it? Oh, there it goes. And it's done. So now we can see because it's clicked on, it's done. You can see bash top is not installed because it's not clicked on. Let's close the software center and let's go back to applications. Let's go to system tools and there's HTOP. Let's open up HTOP. And here we are. We are running at 983 uh, megabytes of RAM and it has 1.5 gigabytes of swap. Now, remember, I changed the swap during the installation, so that works. Now what I want to do is close this and let's just open up a terminal. So it's the Mate terminal because the Mate desktop comes with its own terminal. There's a little bit of uh, bleed through here. It's, well, it's called transparency. Profile preferences. So we're going to go to edit. Profile preferences. And we're going to go to background. And the transparency you can adjust to be lighter or stronger. And I'm going to click on solid color because I don't like transparency. Use system font. So we're going to unclick that. And I'm going to change this to monospace bold. And I'm going to kick it up to 14. And let's select it. Ah, that's better. And I'm going to close it. Okay, I like that. Now, do we have NeoFetch installed? Uh, we don't have NeoFetch. So now I'm going to install something in the terminal. And you're going to install it in the terminal the same way that you would do in FreeBSD, which is the video I did a week ago. I'm going to do sudo package install neo fetch. Put my password in. Now we could go into the software center and do this. And remember, you can't hit enter. You have to hit the Y, the small Y, just like we did in FreeBSD. Because normally in Arch Linux and Debian distributions, the Y for yes is capitalized and it's default, so you can hit enter. But in FreeBSD and GhostBSD, the no is default. I guess that's for safety. They want to make sure you really want to download it. So I'm going to hit the Y and type in 
enter. And now we're installing. And you know what? My resolution's off. I just realized that, so I gotta fix the resolution. Let's hit enter again. And it's done. And before we do anything else, let's um close this. And we gotta fix the display. Now I don't remember where that was. <laughs> Oh, control center. So, okay, so we're going to go to system. We're going to go to control center and I'm going to make it full screen. And I'm going to go to display. And my resolution, I'm going to change to 1280 by 720 because uh, that's the way my virtual machines are working with FreeBSD and GhostBSD. Oh, here, I'm going to apply it. Keep this configuration and close it. And there we go. Now let's close this. And let's close that. Oh, I have. Okay. <laughs> I didn't realize that I opened up the display uh, five times there. So now that I fixed the resolution, you can see we have two bars. We have this top bar and we have the bottom. And the bottom has uh, four workspaces. Okay. And you probably can't see that because my face is in the way. Let me fix my face. So like I said, the bottom has uh, four workspaces right here in the bottom right corner. And what I'm gonna do is, oh yes, I'm gonna go back to the Mate terminal and let's see, we installed NeoFetch. So let's see if it's working now. There we are, there's NeoFetch. You can see we're in GhostBSD. It's been up for 15 minutes. We're in the Mate terminal. And we're in the Mate desktop environment. Kind of running, running kind of high. Anyways, what I'm going to do is clear the screen. And now I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to install git. sudo package install. So the thing is, is that, uh, well, before I do that, <laughs> like I already said, let's just go to another workspace. So we have um, in our applications, they gave us VLC and Rhythmbox. They gave us Firefox. So pretty much you have some basic apps that you're gonna need. But if you wanna install more apps, then you gotta either go to the Software Center, which is a nice, easy to use graphical software center, or you can do it in the terminal. And what's really nice is that the firewall is already installed and running. And I'm going to show you that too. So let's open up our internet before I start installing programs. I want to go to free BSD, even though we're in ghost BSD. So ghost BSD is built upon free BSD. And so we're at free BSD and we're going to go to documentation. I'm going to go to the handbook and I'm going to type in firewall. Oh, and I'm going to click on here, this one right here. So free BSD comes with um, well, first of all, in BSD, you can't get uncomplicated firewall like all the Linux distributions have and like I always use. But in FreeBSD and GhostBSD, you have several firewalls. You have PF firewall, IPFW firewall, and IPF filter IPF. Now, in FreeBSD, none of them, well, first of all, in FreeBSD, like I showed in my last video last week, all the firewalls are installed, but none of them are configured or turned on. And I went into the terminal in my video last week with FreeBSD. In the terminal, I got PF firewall up and running, and I made a very simple configuration file for it and also I uploaded it to my GitLab repository for you to download and use. Now Ghost BSD comes with IPF W firewall already installed, enabled, and up and running with a configuration file that they made for us. So you don't have to do anything. It's already running. Whereas like I said in FreeBSD last week I had to get PF firewall up and running and I made a simple, very simple basic configuration file for it. 
So that's why I brought you to the FreeBSD website. And remember, GhostBSD is built upon FreeBSD. Okay, so this firewall is up and running. And I'm going to show you. So let's close that. And let's go back into the terminal. And let's make this full screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change into root. So I'm going to do su, leave a space and put a dash in there. Because that's the way we change into root in FreeBSD and GhostBSD. And I'm going to put my password in. Now what I'm going to do is cd into Etsy ls dash a. I'm going to vi into rc.conf. Okay, so we're in our configuration file that causes programs or apps to start when we boot into our system. And we can see on line 16, the firewall is enabled to start up boot up. And we can see on line 15, IPFW firewall is enabled to turn on whenever we boot into our system or we restart the system. Okay. Now I did get out of there, right? And let's clear the screen. Let's do ls a. So right here we see we have a file called RC firewall. So let's uh, buy into it. Buy RC firewall. And I suggest, I'm just taking you here to show you. I suggest you don't touch this or make any changes in it unless you really know what you're doing. Okay. And let's just set um, numbers. Set and you. And let's go down. Let's just take a look, quick look at it. So you see they already set the firewall with all its parameters for safety and so forth. You don't have to do anything. And let's go to the bottom. There's 500 lines here. <laughs> so like I said, I just took you in here to show you that you don't have to do anything to get this firewall set up and running in GhostBSD. And I suggest you don't mess with this or change anything unless you really know what you're doing. Okay. So I already repeated myself. Let's get out of there. And let's CD. Let's exit. And go back to here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to install my GitLab repository. So first we have to install Git. So we're going to do sudo package install Git. And I'm going to put the password in. And here you are. Now we have to hit the Y. Now of course you could go to the graphical software center, which is one thing that's really nice about Ghost BSD, but I just prefer to do things in the terminal. And if you've been following my channel, you would know that. Oh, Git installed really fast. So let's clear the screen. Now I'm going to install my GitLab repository. So let's do git clone https colon slash slash. And I put too many T's in there. <laughs> colon slash slash gitlab.com artibus one slash match dot git and like i say in all my videos this command is in the show notes of every video so you don't have to memorize it hit enter and now we're cloning my gitlab repository now i'm going to clear the screen and i'm going to cd into mench and i'm going to ls it and now you can see i have all these folders i have a, a arch linux folder a debian folder a free bsd folder a ghost BSD folder, and I spelled it wrong. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> ghost BST. I'm going to have to fix that. Well, I don't really have to fix it, but I like things to be perfect. So I'm going to have to change it. I spelled it wrong. So that's Ghost BST folder. It should be BSD. I have a Linux Mint Ubuntu folder and a void folder and a readme folder. So I'm going to CD into Ghost BSD. I'm going to ls it. And in here, I have some files. I have uh, a folder for Qtile, a folder for the awesome window manager, a folder for the i3 window manager, run configs, and so forth. 
and I have uh, three wallpapers. So, and actually what I'm going to do is look at it this way. Okay, so that's what's in there. So now I'm going to buy into the auto app because this auto app is not the same as the auto app that's in my free BSD folder or my Debian folder or my Arch Linux folder. So I'm going to buy into auto app just to show you. And that's all that's in there. So, I mean, if you ever went into my Arch one, my Arch one, I think is like 45 lines or 50 lines. Here it's just, uh, I don't know, let's do a set numbers. This is like 21 lines. And if you run this file, this is what it's going to install. It's going to install the awesome window manager, D menu, HTOP. Well, we already installed HTOP, but we'll reinstall it. Uh, I3, the I3 status, I3 lock, the full LibreOffice suite, LibreWolf. And if you don't know what LibreWolf is, it, it's a hardened fork of Firefox. It's a web browser. Going to install LX Appearance, Nitrogen for wallpaper, PCMan FM, Qtile, Remina. Remina is a app for logging into other systems. Thunderbird email, Vim, Volume Icon, XFCE Power Manager, and Zesh. Okay, so I'm going to run it. Let's quit out of there, and let's do, and let's do um, Auto. Enter. Hit the small Y, and now it's going to install all these apps. It's 110 files, so I'm going to pause the video and come back, so don't go away. That didn't take long at all. I think it only took a minute or two, maybe three minutes at the most. And now I'm going to clear the screen. Now I'm going to LL-A again. Now we see you have a run config file right at the bottom here, right here, run config. So I'm going to buy into it just to show you what's there. And this file is a lot smaller than the one that's in my Arch or my Debian. And this is going to copy some wallpapers and configuration files over. And I'm going to run it. So let's uh, get out of there. Let's quit. Let's clear the screen. Let's do period slash run configs. Now it's done. <laughs> well, that was fast, eh? So let's get out of there. What I'm going to do is close the terminal and we're going to log out. So let's go to system. Let's, we're not going to shut down. We're going to log out of Mensch. And we're going to log out. Now we're going to pull down this menu. And we see we have Qtile here. We have Awesome here. And we have the i3 window manager here. Let's get into Qtile and put my password in. And now we're in Qtile with my configuration file. And let's open up uh, a terminal. Let's do HTOP. Oh, we're running high. Hmm. You know what? I'm going to do a fresh reboot. Let's do uh, sudo power off. No, let's not do that. Let's do reboot. Reboot. Put my password in. And it's going to reboot the system. Seems to be running high. It didn't take long to uh, boot into the system. And we're going to put our password in. So we're logging right into uh, Qtile now. And let's do uh, HTOP. Okay, that's better. <laughs> so it's running at 500 megabytes of RAM. Not bad. And let's get out of there. And let's see if we can open up uh, LibreWolf. And this is LibreWolf, the hardened fork of Firefox. There it is. Okay, let's close it. And let's open up, see if we can open up Firefox. It would be mod key F. And there's Firefox with all this bloat. And let's close it. And let's get out of there. That's Qtile. Let's see if Awesome is working. Let's click on here. Let's click on Awesome. Let's put my password in. And now we're in the Awesome Window Manager. And let's do uh, this. Let's do LX Appearance. And let's do Vim Dark. And let's do the icon theme. Well, you know what? Let's check these out. Hmm. That's kind of nice, eh? Let's do that. So these colors that we're changing, 
this is going to stick for the um, right now we're in the awesome window manager this is going to stick for qtile and the i3 window manager i'm going to close that and let's see what we can open up here let's open up firefox and there's firefox okay let's do it not now let's open up the uh volume icon let's do show slider and let's do white gnome there it is okay now what i'm going to do is get out of here let's quit and let's go into the i3 window manager and let's put our password in and now we're in the i3 window manager and we have that's working our volume control and let's do now normally d menu would be mod key d but i changed it to mod key p there's d menu let's type in nitrogen and let's go to preferences let's take off recursive we want to unclick recursive we don't want that we're going to do add and you go to mench folder i'm going to select it i'm going to okay it and there's the three wallpapers let's click on this one because i like it and let's close it now let's get out of there let's exit and let's go back in and there we are and there's the volume icon. Let's do mod key F for Firefox. And there's Firefox. And let's do mod key O. You know what? I think it's uh, control mod O. There you go. Control mod O is LibreOffice. This is the LibreOffice suite. The full LibreOffice suite. There's Calc. There's the spreadsheet program. Let's close it. There's document writer. There's, let's close it. Let's close that. What about rhythm box? RHY, rhythm box. And there's rhythm box for music. Now let's open up a terminal. I gave you my Zesh configuration file. Let's see if it's working. And there it is. That's my Zesh configuration file. And let's do an HTOP here. And we're running at 610 megabytes of RAM. It runs a bit higher than uh, Arch Linux. But hey, what can I say? And if you notice the time is correct, if you look at the top right corner, it's 7.31 p.m. And if I log out of there and I log into Qtile, the time is also correct. If you look at the bottom right, it's 7.31 p.m. And that is the correct time here. And let's quit out of there. And let's log into the Mate desktop. Put my password in. And if you look at the top right corner, it's 1931. And that is also the correct time. It's just in 24 hour rather than AM and PM. Now let's get out of there. But if we go into awesome, the clock is wrong. And Let's log out of Mench. Let's go into the awesome window manager. Let's put my password in. Enter. And now look at the clock. It's 11.32 p.m. And if you noticed, the clock in LightDM is off as well. And it's the clock in LightDM is set to universal time, which is right now it's four hours ahead of us. And so it's awesome. Now, I figured out how to fix it in Awesome, but I didn't figure out how to fix it in LightDM. And I didn't have any trouble with the time or the clock in my video last week when I installed FreeBSD. FreeBSD had no trouble with the time zone or the clock at all. I don't know why there's a little bit of trouble here in GhostBSD because GhostBSD is built on FreeBSD. Anyways, this is what I did. Open up a terminal. We're going to do is type in this command sudo tz. Uh, I don't know why it's doing that. Let's go into zesh sudo tz set up. 
put my password in and we're going to go down here to America hit enter I'm going to go down to 11 for Canada and I'm going to go down to Eastern Ontario and Quebec most areas I'm changing it to standard Eastern time this is look reasonable yes and now I'm going to uh, now you can see it fixed the clock already now I'm going to do a uh, sudo reboot and see if it stays fixed. Now it didn't fix it for LightDM, but it did fix it for the awesome window manager. And there wasn't a problem with it in the other window managers or desktop environments. So now we're at LightDM and it, again, you can see the clock is still off. I don't know why, because I didn't have this problem in FreeBSD. And anyways, I'm gonna put my password in and go into the awesome window manager. Now you can see it's fixed for the awesome window manager. The clock is correct. Now I'm going to log out of here. I'm going to go back to the Mate desktop, which is the default desktop. Put my password in. And you can see here, there are applications. So now we have uh, an office. We have the full LibreOffice suite and an internet. I also have the LibreWolf web browser, Remina for remoting into other desktop, other computers, Thunderbird email, and so forth. And I just didn't check the backgrounds. Let's see if there's any um, change desktop background. Let's see what kind of backgrounds they have. Let's try this one. This is a dark one, eh? <laughs> Let's just minimize it. Oh, it's a computer. <laughs> okay. Go back up. Well, that's different. And let's go back to the top. And this one was the default. Let's close it. And that's it. In this video, I showed you how to download and install Ghost BSD. And I think it's a fantastic distribution. First of all, it only takes a minute and a half to do a complete install. It comes with Firefox, Rhythmbox, and VLC. And it comes with the Mate desktop environment. And the ISO is only about 2.6 gigabytes to download. And in the video, I showed you how to download my configuration files and how to install the Awesome Window Manager, the Qtile Window Manager, and the i3 Window Manager. Now, there was a little bit of a problem with the clock for the Awesome Window Manager, and I showed you how to fix it. And the clock in LightDM was set to uh, universal time. I didn't know how to fix that, but if you do, let me know in the comments. Because I didn't have any trouble with FreeBSD when I installed it last week with the clock. And another beautiful thing about uh, GhostBSD, well, two really nice things about GhostBSD. Well, actually, <laughs> I should say three really nice things about GhostBSD. Number one, it's a super quick install. It only takes a minute and a half to install. It uses a graphical app to install it. I think it's the Calamaris, but I'm not sure. But the install is really easy, and it's quick and fast. It comes with a graphical Easy to use software center, so you don't have to download apps in the terminal unless you want to. And it comes with the firewall pre-installed, enabled to start every time you boot into your system. And it comes with a proper configuration file for the firewall. So the firewall is set, it's up and running, and you don't have to do anything with it. I really think that GhostBSD is a fantastic operating system, and I'm going to give it two thumbs up. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like it, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. Until next time, I am the Linux Mensch.